But I was like, oh, I know that. I, remember, I started a fire because of that. <laughs> <laughs> and I had another fight with him, and 15 years later, we tore the back end of his robot out. You held a grudge for 15 years. <laughs> I've been held a grudge a very, very long time. And I'm like, come on, <laughs> it's something. And then it would just go, Whoa. <laughs> The, the electromagnets, they're so powerful, if we leave, on, leave them on for more than five seconds, they catch fire. What? Today, we're talking with the brilliant builders of Beta and the revolutionary rotator. On this episode of Behind the Battle. It's hammer time. Hey everyone, we're here with Victor Soto from Team Revolution and Rotator. We're here with John and Gabriel from Team Beta. How did you, Victor Soto, get started in robotics? I went to, to a school that didn't really have like a STEM program or anything like that, mm -hmm. but my sister did. I wasn't in that school, but I was always like the little brother hanging along, just <laughs> tagging, annoying, just running around and, hey, what are you doing, what are you doing? And before long, I became like the honorary team member. We were actually working off of a makerspace from Nola Garcia. She's a, she's a big name here in the robotics scene in, in South Florida because she had basically the first makerspace before makerspaces became a thing. But not only that, um, she was part of Team Loki. And then after hours, like after a lot of the teams would go home, I would see them driving around the parking lot with their little 60 pound robot that had a little 60 pound robot uh, Thorn, I remember. And I would see this thing driving, it was like 20, 30 miles an hour in the parking lot. I was like, oh, so cool. <laughs> So then I got into BattleBots through that because it was around the time period when Comedy Central canceled the show. And then, I don't know how, but they, Greg and Trey and Nola managed to somehow organize these high school and college BattleBot events in Miami. We started with middleweights, 120 pound robots, which is pretty hard to, to start with when you're in high school and you don't really know what you're doing. <laughs> you really had the robotics from the start, like ju just being the tag along brother. I mean, <laughs> that's that's so cool. It was fun because there were a lot of engineers from different companies. They would actually mentor the kids, but the kids were the ones doing the work. So they were the ones learning how to use the milling machine, the lathe, how to weld. That was a big thing because it was this all girls school and all these girls coming in there uniforms and then put the hair up, put the welding gear on, and start welding. And by the time I got into certain classes in college, it's like, oh, I already know why we're learning that. I already know why we're doing that because a lot of times you're taking these classes and you don't really know what it's applying to. And you're like, why am I learning? But I, mean, I was like, oh, I know that. I, remember. I started a fire because of that. <laughs> Prior to 2016, um, I had only built middleweights, 120 pound robots. And the heavyweights for the TV show now on Discovery are 250 pound robots. So in my mind, I was like, well, mm, I'll just make everything twice as big. Like, <laughs> make all this metal twice as thick, let's, and that'll work out fine. And and I, I didn't think about simple things like reinforcing your wheels, because now your drivetrain has to support twice the weight. And until that point, it was just all like, hmm, what did I do in my middle weight? Go pull up the old cat. Oh, OK, I remember that little trick. Let me copy that. Over <laughs> Better not just times two that. Um. <laughs> well, that, that's, that's essentially what it, Rotator was, a copy paste of my middleweight robot, I had <laughs> flame, which is an undercutter. And they're like, oh, they want something quick, but unique. I was like, well, I had a really reliable middleweight undercutter. Let me just copy paste it this way. <laughs> Gabriel, John, one at a time, if you could guys both just give me an insight into how you guys got started in robotics. Go, Gabe. Go, John. <laughs> <laughs> You're so polite. <laughs> I started an awfully long time ago, in 1998, I think. I heard about uh, Robot Wars on television. Uh, well, they were putting out adverts for season two of Robot Wars, I think. And I instantly knew I, it's something I had to do. Getting inspired by some of the machines that were around then, like Mortis and then Biohazard from the US. I just moved into a new house. And the first thing I did was clear out the garage and put a, a lathe and a bandsaw and a put a drill in there and uh, got to work. Gabriel, what about you? So uh, I started in 1999. I watched it on television and went, I want to do that. Like, I didn't have, I hadn't, my dad was a special effects engineer for, in the film industry. So there was all sorts of models going on and I helped him with bits and pieces, but I never really made my own thing. I didn't have a workshop. I just had so many sort of like, I just cobbled stuff together, but it was about getting there and building a robot for me that was the thing. Um, interestingly, my first robot was in Series 5, um, and then Series 6 is actually when I met John, 
um, and we had a fight. So it's been like 2002. We had a fight and he smashed the top of my robot up and it was all the expensive bits and I was pretty oh. furious with him. He didn't really talk to me very much. He just beat us up and I had another fight with him and 15 years later, we tore the back end of his robot out. <laughs> you held a grudge for 15 years. <laughs> I've been held a grudge a very, very long time. And that's then how we sort of became friends. Uh, we sort of, you know, we leveled up the playing field and then we joined together um, to go to China. And we said, well, actually, you know, we've done the spinner, we've done the hammer. What haven't we done? And Flipper was the, uh, Flipper was the choice. So we actually, our first robot that we built together was a flipper robot called Tanshi. But we did very, very well with our mm -hmm. flipper robot in China. And that sort of cemented our idea that we should come to BattleBots as a team, come together mm -hmm. as a team and bring uh, and bring Beta back. Rotator hasn't had the dual blade in a while. What, what kind of happened to that? When we started in 2016, it was a 30 pound blade for each blade was 30 pounds. As I started armoring up because we didn't have good wheel guards or anything like that, it went down to like, 25 pounds per blade. And it started getting to the point where it's like, well, now we have like almost a 20 pound blade. Like, is it even worth trying to hit something with that? Yeah. And so, well, let's, let's, let's configure it because it's, it's, it's a good matchup for flippers or hammer bots, but let's, let's also focus on more modular armor. Uh, the other thing is that adding, uh, especially now the, the second spinner is like a separate module that I have to bolt on. Producers or pit runners come and they tell you, hey, you, you, your next match is in an hour. Like we, we were basically still putting the final screws on the robot as it's lining up into the arena. And we're like, man, this is stressful. Like it takes us almost an hour to put this module on because after all those hits and multiple fights, everything moves around. Now, now it's not gonna fit anymore. This year we have our heaviest blade yet. We have a 50 pound AR 500 disc. Yeah. And so I'm like, okay, well, I want to hit with a 50 pound blade, not a 25 yeah. pound blade. <laughs> In my mind, it was always like, I have these two 30 pound blades. It'd be so nice if you could just combine it like my original middle. It's so much easier to drive when it's a single blade because we have less mass hanging out out of the wheels. So it tends to oversteer a lot. Let's get back to Beto a little bit. That hammer is so powerful. When it slams the ground, the entire body goes boom, like, off just because of all the force. The whole robot used to jump off the ground. Yeah. Weirdly now, it doesn't. Mm. Because we've fitted huge electromagnets in the base, in the floor. What? And the battle bots have just installed a new half inch thick steel floor everywhere. So we can really use those, mm -hmm. those electromagnets to keep us onto the ground. And it looks really strange now. It's yeah. about three or four times more powerful than the old beta. There's two bangs now. First, there's the bang of the electromagnetic. Um, that's like over half a ton going wallop. So it pulls Beta to the ground because Beta pulls its wheels up. Yeah. It pulls it into the ground and then the hammer fires. So there's actually a, like a bang, bang like that now. Okay, well, we got to unpack some of that because that was, <laughs> oh, that was, that is insane. In fact, the original Beta was designed to have magnets. Back in those days, the BattleBots floor wasn't up to it. We put it in the test box in 2002, and we just pulled the floor up. Oh, the floor wasn't man. wasn't strong. We'd, we did the floor just clamped to the bottom of the robot, and we couldn't move. It's not just the electromagnets because you need ground clearance in uh, the battle box. You can't mm -hmm. be skating on the ground because you're going to get stuck and beat. Sure. And it's going to be terrible. So it's got titanium torsion bar suspension. So when to get to the magnets first to engage them, it pulls its wheels up like that against the torsion bar with pneumatics. So the actual firing mechanism is fire, wheels come up inside, robot clamps down with electromagnets. So that's all happening instantaneously. And as they clamp, the hammer comes over and hits. The, the electromagnets uh, <laughs> that we have, they're so powerful. If we leave, on, leave them on for more than five seconds, they catch fire. What? If you're watching BattleBots and you see Beta's hammer fire, you go, eh, it's a hammer. Behind the scenes, under the shell of Beta, all of this is going on. The retraction of the wheels, the electromagnets, that blows my mind. And that's the uh, part of the traction for us, I think, is to make, is to create something new and challenging. If you're just creating a boring machine, what's the point? But if you're doing something interesting and challenging and new, 
that is a huge incentive to do something that's so much more fulfilling. People say that, oh, the spinners, you know, an effective spinner is very tricky to make, but they're not, you know, they're, you don't have to have all of the control mechanisms that you've got in our robot. It's just, it's there's so much going on in the, in the robot, but that's, for us, what makes it building it enjoyable. It's time to talk about the Rotator Beta Fight. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> talk to me about your strategy going into this fight with Beta. The only experience I had with Beta was that in 2016, there were pit neighbors. So I remember Beta and I remember thinking like, man, like this guy's got a massive mechanism for his hammer. He's not, he's not like one of these hammers that's just scoring points. It's hammered to, to hurt you. I decided to start Rotator upside down blade high, which is something that we would do often with the double disc, but now we're single disc, we would just flip it over because that blade is also our armor. So if you want to hit us, you have to hit the blade. Mm -hmm. Kind of our strategy that we had against Blacksmith that we just weren't able to follow through on was we're, we're going to aim for that pivot joint where the hammer comes down on. Yeah. Beta has a rack and pinion system. They did a really smart design move where the hinge of the hammer is actually bigger than the pinion. Mm. So that hinge is really thick aluminum and you have to somehow get inside to get the gear. So it's, it's going to be very hard to get there, but he's going to wait for a good hit. <laughs> That's yeah, always yeah. the thing. So let's just make it really hard for him to find a good hit. So that was a strategy going in, make them hit the weapon if, if they were to fire their hammer and try to dive off over them and see what we can hit. John, what was your strategy going into this fight against Rotator? With a horizontal, you don't want to witness the weapon too much you want to get it, the we their weapon to hit the arena because the arena is not going to hit budge. <laughs> that, that's a big hit for them. So you're constantly trying to get them into the wall to give them big hits on their weapon. So hopefully you're going to damage them. But yeah, Victor's got a very nicely built machine and that didn't stop it. Even with Tombstone, we have to be very careful when we fire the weapon because mm -hmm. that exposed bar, as you, as you say, as soon as you get in the way of that bar, it's gone. But Victor's 10 times worse because it's, it's got a completely exposed blade. Yeah. There's just nowhere you can hit it. There's there's always some weird, funny gyroscopic forces going on when your blade gets <laughs> angled. So when when, when we when we rode up and we, we were kind of like here, it sometimes does this funny dance that does this. And I'm like, uh, come on, <laughs> it's something. And then it would just go wow, <laughs> to the ground. <laughs> I wasn't scared about getting slammed into the walls because mm. I learned last season, we definitely have the reliability. It's about tactics. If we had fired when the blade was running, we'd have lost that head. So yeah. it had to be, it had to be at exactly the right time. We had to wait, we had to wait for a good hit. Another, another aspect is a lot of UK roboteers question why so many American ro robots have exposed wheels. They just don't understand. Why would you have an exposed wheel on a robot? So vulnerable. In fact, this demonstrates it quite well. It's very difficult to stop a robot with exposed wheels because it can always gain purchase on something. It can always grab at something. It's all, it never stops. So Victor, again, it has been a pleasure. Thank you so much and we'll see you very soon. Thank you for your time and thank you for, for this. And for everything, it's awesome. We'll talk to you guys very soon. Thank you so much for this and uh, see you soon. Thank you so much for your time and for the toys. See you later. Join us next time for more exclusive interviews on the Vex Robotics channel and make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss a second of the action. Thanks for watching.